Hi, I'm Peter Jones, Chartered Surveyor, Author and Property Investor. I've had a question in from a viewer asking what are the responsibilities of a landlord? Well, there's two different ways of looking at this. Firstly, from a moral point of view, the responsibility of the landlord is to provide good, safe, sound, watertight, good quality property so that the tenant can live in relative comfort. But of course there are legal obligations and responsibilities which we have as landlords as well. And there's two particular ways in which those responsibilities are passed to us. The first is in law and the second is through the tenancy agreement itself. So let's just think about the law. The law is always changing and over the last few years government has been in interfering, if that's the right word, more and more in the private rented sector and imposing more and more obligations on the landlord. But the basic obligations which you're going to find as a landlord are these. In terms of keeping the property safe, you're going to have to have an annual gas safety check if there's gas in the property. When you let the property out, you should have an electrical certificate. Um, when you let the property out, believe it or not, it's now the landlord's responsibility to make sure that a tenant complies with Home Office regulations on immigration. So you're going to have to make sure that they've got a valid passport and you know who they are and where they've come from. There's an obligation on the landlord to make sure that the money you're taking in the rent hasn't been laundered. And, of course, overall, there's a presumption that you're going to be keeping the property in sound and watertight condition and that property is going to be safe for the tenant. Within the tenancy agreement itself, most tenancies nowadays are going to be a short, short-hold tenancies. The obligations for a landlord are going to be that you're going to keep the property wind, watertight, safe again, but specifically, landlord is going to be responsible for repairs. Now, in most tenancies, the tenant is going to be responsible for a certain amount of wear and tear. To be honest, though, that can be quite hard to prove at the end of the tenancy, unless you've got a full-blown inventory showing exactly what the property was like at the beginning of the tenancy. And when you let the property, there are certain uh, things that you have to comply with, so that if you ever need to take repossession of the property through a Section 21 uh, notice as it currently is and that's all changing as well by the way but there are certain things that you have to do at the beginning of the tenancy you have to give the tenant a, a booklet which the government provide which tells them all about renting you have to give them an EPC an energy performance certificate which shows how uh, much energy the property is using and whether it's actually sort of environmentally friendly in a sense uh, you have to make sure that the copies of the gas certificate and electrical certificate are available all of this kind of thing has to be done at the time when you issue the tenancy agreement. If you're taking a deposit, very, very important that you have the deposit protected properly. And there are various schemes that you can pay the deposit into and insure the deposit with. If you don't do that and you ever need to take possession of the property, then you're going to find it very, very difficult because it could invalidate your Section 21 certificate. And if you've got a, a bad tenant who's causing trouble, that could be really serious for you. So there we are. In two minutes, that's sort of a very quick overview of the responsibilities of a landlord. If you're thinking about being a property investor, though, don't let that put you off, because ultimately most of this will be dealt with by your managing agent. And it's just a matter of having simple processes in place, checklists in place, just to make sure that you do everything, you cover everything and you don't forget anything. Well, I hope you found that informative and inspirational. And if you want help in property, please do come over to my website, www.thepropertyteacher.co.uk. Loads of great resources there, including my blog. There's loads of free videos, loads of great articles. There's free reports to download, including Learning with Peter, where you'll be able to access resources like my video courses, like my eBooks, including my home study course, the Successful Property Investor Strategy Workshop, which I've literally sold thousands of copies of which takes you through how I started in property, literally with none of my own money, but how I was able to build a portfolio of £2 million worth of the property in just four years. I'll show you everything that I did right, so that you can do the same, and I'll show you everything that I did wrong. I'll tell you about all of my mistakes so that you can avoid them, so that you can progress in property far more quickly than me. Until next time, here's to successful property investing.